Gram stains are a relatively crude but quite useful technique for identifying and classifying microorganisms into one of two groups based upon their retention of crystal violet and iodine complex. Nevertheless, the, the nature of this technique requires um, a special attention to the use of control sections. The mechanism underlying this differential staining of so-called negative and positive organisms becomes clearer when considering the generic structure of the, the outer cell wall. So in the case of a negative organism, as demonstrated here in this cartoon, the thin layer of peptidoglycan sandwiched in between the two plasma membranes holds relatively little content of the crystal violet iodine complex and so it can be differentiated more quickly. On the other hand, positive organisms, as shown in this diagram, have a very thick layer of peptidoglycan and so will retain far more of the crystal violet iodine complex when exposed to organic solvents. Gram staining protocols are therefore designed to exploit this basic difference in cell wall structure. Now while you'll come across a wide variety of different protocols for gram staining in textbooks and over the internet, the basic procedure is very similar to as laid out here. Beginning with treatment with crystal violet, followed by treatment with iodine to stabilize the bound crystal violet. And it also somewhat changes the color to a, to a deeper blue color, as we'll see later on. The next step is to treat with an organic solvent. Um, some protocols will use alcohol, others will use acetone, which is the one that we'll see today. And also some others will use a, a mixture of both alcohol and acetone. In any case, the goal of this decolorization step is to remove the crystal violet iodine complex, um, preferentially from the negative organisms, thus enabling you then to follow up with some form of counter stain. Safranin is demonstrated here to highlight the negative organisms. A critical point, however, to remember when performing gram stains is that the decolorization step is essentially a form of differentiation. And like many other types of differentiation steps performed in histochemistry, it is possible to either over differentiate or under differentiate. So on that basis, you can end up with negative organisms that are showing as being positive and indeed positive organisms that may be over differentiated and be misinterpreted as being negative. Hence the reason for control sections is absolutely essential when performing gram stains. So having explored the background theory to gram staining, this video will demonstrate two different gram stain protocols which differ in their choice of counter stain. So beginning with brown hops, um, where uh, we will utilize basic fuchsin to stain the negative or organisms and then subsequently use tartrazine as a, as a general yellow background stain. And then the gram tort stain, uh, which will utilize a, a mixture of red and green dyes to counter stain our section. Importantly, the critical step for both of these techniques is the decolorization or differentiation step. And um, for both of these protocols in this demonstration, we'll be using acetone. And we'll be talking about the importance of um, moving the sections promptly through each of those stages so as to not dry the section and equally to avoid over differentiation of the positive organisms. So here we have four sections which are control sections containing a mixture of positive and negative organisms. And the first step 
for all these slides, two of which will be for the brown hops and two for the torts method, is simply to, to apply the crystal violet solution for two minutes. At the end of two minutes, we simply rinse off the crystal violet from the slides. And if we pick one of those up and look at it uh, more closely, we can see at this point, we should see quite a, a very bright violet color. We then need to stabilize the bound crystal violet by producing a complex with iodine. And so we simply just apply the, the grams iodine to each slide. And having done that, after the five minutes, we'll rinse it off in, in tap water. And now if we hold one of those slides up to a piece of filter paper once again, we should now see that's a noticeably darker color. So now to continue, we need to differentiate or decolorize the complex and we'll do that over in the fume cupboard here. So initially I'll just put those into the water bath there. Now individually I would normally employ a, a blotting step in between this technique. I think I do get better results when, when I do it that way. But here I'll just, for simplicity, flick off the water and it's a brief dip in the acetone as you can see. No more than two to three dips and then promptly back into the water bath. Okay. So you can see it's pretty much on that second or third dip that the majority of the excess dye will be released. And that's all that um, is needed on, on this occasion. Now, as I say, I do think that I get better results if I blot immediately prior to going into the acetone. So assuming that our decolorization step has been performed effectively such that only the positive organisms are now stained, we then just need to apply a counter stain to more clearly illustrate any negative organisms that are present within the tissue section. So the two alternatives that we'll explore is firstly this one using tort stain. And tort stain is actually a mixture of neutral red and fast green. So the stock solutions are prepared in ethanol and then a working uh, solution is prepared freshly and filtered just prior to use according to a protocol similar to this one shown here. So prior to applying tort stain we simply rinse the slides in deionized water. Flick off the, the water and then we, we apply our freshly prepared tort stain for five minutes. Now the goal here is that the neutral red will be uptaken into the negative organisms whereas the, the green dye will provide a, a general counter stain to the background tissue. Okay, so we rinse that off after five minutes with deionized water. And then finally we take our slides back to the fume cupboard for a brief differentiation step in 2% acetic alcohol followed by dehydration through three changes of absolute alcohol. So just ensuring that I'm rinsing the forceps and rinsing the slide each time to remove any traces of water. And then finally clear and cover slip. So here are some results of the staining that were achieved on this occasion. So there's an area here of, of mainly um, round cocci shaped organisms and there's a definite blue area indicating the positive organisms stained with the crystal violet and iodine. Likewise here there's some negative rods out to the far left there and then a cluster of these uh, positive 
blue and negative red organisms towards the center here. In terms of background staining, you can see that some of the, the neutral red is um, providing some background staining of cell nuclei, whereas the fast green is providing quite a pleasant background staining to the rest of the tissue section. So now let's go back and stain the other two slides that we prepared earlier, and this time complete the protocol according to the brown hops method. So in this case we'll begin with using basic Fuchsin, which is this kind of bright pink colour. So we apply that for five minutes. Then subsequently rinse that off using tap water. And because this tends to overstain the section initially, we then need to employ a uh, differentiation step. You can see that's quite a red effect overall there within the tissue. So then we'll go back and employ what is known as Galigo solution, which is dilute formaldehyde in 1% acetic acid. And so it's probably best to do this with assistance with microscope control, but the idea is to uh, decolorize the section sufficiently um, so that it only really should be retained within the negative organisms and uh, with some nuclear staining as well. So after a couple of applications there over about a minute or so, that's sufficient to remove the background and then a rinse in in water. Then um, we apply a second counter stain after a, a quick blot to remove some of the excess fluid from the slide. So you will use tartrazine which is our yellow dye there and I guess the blotting step is just because this treatment is so brief we don't wish to dilute our stain too much. So by placing the tartrazine on there for about 30 seconds that should be sufficient to give a nice general yellow background colour to our tissue section. So after 30 seconds tip that off just use a bit of filter paper to help you carry that over to the fume carpet and dry a little bit around uh, the slide to remove some of the excess and then a brief rinse initially in acetone so we're rinsing the slide, rinsing the forceps so three changes of acetone again paying attention to rinsing the forceps as well as the slide and then through to a mixture of acetone and xylene prior to finally going into two changes of xylene in preparation for cover slipping. So here's the outcomes of the staining that were achieved on this occasion. You can see the yellow tartrazine gives quite a pleasant overall background and the nuclei have retained some of the basic fuchsin. As we scan through these areas, however, we'll come across these mixtures. In this case, there's some positive rods. Here we've got quite a prominent rod there in the middle. And then and here's some further dark blue positive organisms, as well as having in other areas uh, mixtures of positive and negative cocci. Again, here are some quite prominent positively stained cocci in that area. So there we have it, two different variations of the Gram stain using different counter stains. Of course, the question arises from this as to which technique is best. Well, there's really no simple answer to that. It may come down to personal preference. Um, in, in my case, I think I prefer the taut method simply because there are less steps to employ. It's quite nice just putting on one counter stain solution. Um, but in practice, the best method is the one that you have optimized in your laboratory using control sections.